on the fifth day of Kitsuke, my musubi will be Oh Taiko. Hello everyone and welcome back to the 12 days of Kitsuke. Today we're going to be looking at probably the most popular musubi that you will find in Japan, the Otaiko or drum musubi. Now, if you've ever studied under or seen videos put out by the Sodo School of Kimono and Kitsuke, you've probably seen this tool. It's very popular with them and they love to use it for Otaiko musubi or any other musubi that is tied using a Nagoya or a Fukuro obi. I did not graduate from the Sodo School of Kitsuke. I've never used one of these. So, let's just add it to our tree. Nice little decoration there. There we go. I'm going to show you another way of tying the Otaiko Musubi. Let's get started. For this Musubi, you will need a Nagoya Obi, a Koshihimo, an Obi Jime, an obi makura, an obi yage, and a clip is optional. Start with the narrow end of the nagoya obi. The narrow end has two edges. One, set, one edge is going to have a seam, and the other edge is going to have a fold. The edge with the seam is the one that you want facing up at all times. So bring it around your back, from your right side and bring it over your left shoulder. Ideally, the length should be the bottom of your obi ita. This obi is a little small on me, so I'm going to shorten it up just slightly. Okay. And wrap. Right now, the seam is up, which is perfect. I'm going to wrap once. When I get to this part, I have a lot of extra fabric up here. What I want to do is reach underneath and grab it and pull down. That way I have a nice flat line up here. Go once again. When I get to the back, I take both ends, give them a good pull, and drop the tesaki. Next, I twist, bringing the tesaki under the taresaki. Bring it around to the front, and again, the seam is still the top edge. To secure the tesaki, there's two ways to do it. First way is to fold it up and tuck it in. Second way is to use a clip. For the next part, I'm going to need my obi makura and my obi age all ready and prepared. Around the back, you want to put your obi makura under the obi and you want to make a nice flat top. You want to get the obi makura as high as you can and still have it flat. Next, you want to bring the obi makura up and over the knot. Okay. Find the ties for your obi makura. And be sure to tie them tightly. tuck them away. The obiage we're just going to tie in a temporary knot right now. And we will come back to it later.
For the next part, you're going to need a koshihimo. If you folded it correctly, you'll pick it up off the floor so it, your hand is right in the middle part. Place it underneath the obi, right about the height of the bottom of the obi that's wrapped around your middle. And flip up. Flip up. Grab in the middle and use your other hand to move the rest of the obi up. The tail should be about the length of your fingers. This is a little long, so I'm going to adjust it. There we go. Once you have that all adjusted, bring the koshihimo around to your front and just tie in a temporary knot. Next, you're going to unclip the tesaki and you're going to move it around the back. With your left hand, reach into the drum of the obi. High. Grab your tesaki and pull it through. Next, you'll need your obijime. Fold your obijime down like this. This protects the tassels from getting ruined as they go through the obi. Have the obijime in your right hand again and pass it through the drum of the obi. To make sure your obijime is at the right spot, you need to be sure you have captured all the fabric that was tucked up, so lower is usually better. Yep, that's good on that side. Let's check the other side. Yep, I've caught everything. I'm good. Make sure your obijime is the same length. Left side over right side. Tie a knot. Bring the new left side back over. Tie another knot. And left tassel up, right tassel down. Now we deal with the obiage. With the obiage, you need to go thirds and halves to fold it. So we go first third, first bottom third, top third, and then in half. And same on the other side. Bottom third, top third, and half. knot and twist. Take two fingers, place them against the knot, and wrap the top end around. And with your fingers, grab the other end and pull it through. And this will give you a nice square knot at the front. Pull up the ends and tuck them in behind your obi. Now comes the moment of truth. You're going to undo your koshihimo. If you have not caught all of the fabric in the back in your drum, then your obi will come apart. So this is definitely moment of truth. So just let it go and just pull it out. And there's the otaiko.
Now, if you've ever studied in the Sodo school of kimono or kitsuke or seen any videos done by their students, you probably will have seen this little tool. Uh, it's very popular with those students and I am not one of those students and I don't know how to use it. So let's just get rid of it.